say hello to a new friend on an old road. Take a two-lane trip of memories into mysteries unknown. Come along for the ride. Jim Hinckley's America. Jim Hinckley's America. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, glad you could join us this morning, uh, September 10th, 2023. Don't know where this year went. It's 75 degrees here in Kingman, Arizona. Studios of Jim Hinckley's America within spitting distance of legendary Route 66. Hey, I always like to see who's popping in the studio this morning. We got a great uh, Nolan Stoltz is with us today. If you're not a follower of his uh, projects on Patreon, something I highly recommend. It's a great investment. And uh, not only be supporting him, that boy turns up some of the most interesting things about Route 66. Maggie May is with us this morning from East Lansing. She has an affiliation there with the uh, Motor Cities Group and uh, the uh, Ransom E. Olds Museum. And, well, God bless. There's Keith Kentner and the Jim Livingston Art from Tucumcari. Ah, uh, Jim, good morning. It's always great to have uh, Jim Livingston with us this morning. Our guest today will be uh, Connie Loveland from uh, the Tucumcari Main Street Program and possibly David Brenner, if we can get that figured out, from the Roadrunner Lodge, also in Tucumcari. Uh, Roadrunner Lodge happens to be our go-to place when we're in the area. It's uh, literally a living time capsule. David has done just an absolute amazing job of uh, capturing the spirit of the mid-60s with just an absolute all the modern amenities you need, but done tastefully. Speaking of time capsules, give a shout out to Connie Eccles uh, at the Wagon Wheel Motel. I need to clarify a couple things real quick. Uh, the Wagon Wheel Motel is for sale, but it is not closed. Well, Connie's still there. She's still greeting visitors, and she is uh, as feisty as ever. Always got a smile and always welcomes people like they're old friends, but Yep, the Wagon Wheel Motel, the oldest continuously operated motel on Route 66, still in business. And, well, while you're there, if you're a fan of juvenile humor, just down the road of Spit and a Hop, you've got Uranus Fudge Company and General Store. Uh, if you're not a fan of juvenile humor, take a picture of the beautiful neon and don't stop. But uh, I think most of us can get a smile from some juvenile humor. And, boy, I tell you what, they've sold everything on their on the at Uranus, they've managed to sell everything on the hog, including the squeal, when it comes to juvenile humor. That's a, another great little fun stop there on Route 66, the Centennial coming up. Hey, we have uh, Connie Loveland and David Brenner. How are you folks doing this morning in beautiful Tucumcari? Hey, good morning, Jim. It is a beautiful morning here. It's nice and cool this morning. Using toothpicks to keep your eyelids open after yesterday? And a, that and a big cup of coffee. <laughs> yes. Hey, David, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing rather well. Um, I'm on my second time here today, too. <laughs> oh, you're down a little bit on your volume there, Dave. Can't quite hear you too well. <clears throat> Can you hear me any better? Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. That's good. Ah. Connie, you had the big event yesterday, one of many there in Tucumcari, but uh, it looked like you had one heck of a turnout. We had a great turnout. Uh, we were, I think, headed for record crowds. Um, and then around, oh gosh, it was about 5.30, we had a pretty good windstorm come through. We were on the tail end of a, a pretty bad, severe storm. Um, so we, we had an exciting few minutes while uh, some of the vendors packed up and um, once that storm cleared out, I don't know, Arizona might be like Tucumcari and, and New Mexico. When we have severe weather, it usually doesn't last long. Um, <laughs> so we didn't get any rain. We got wind, but everybody stuck around and stuck it out. And we had, end of the night, we had our big fire performance and a great fireworks show by the city of Tucumcari Fire Department. And we, oh, we just had a great time. 
You know, usually here in Kingman, when we get a big storm like that, wind and rain, we just pack up and walk to the other side of the street where it's sunny. It's, uh... <laughs> that sounds about right. I saw some, well, actually, uh, Jim Livingston had posted a photo of Tucum Carry Mountain with a spectacular lightning bolt in it. And, you know, that's that's not too far from downtown Tucum Carry, but we didn't have any of that lightning there. So thank goodness for that. And Jim Livingston Art, you know, that is one of your latest additions there in Tucumcari, and that is a real plus for your community. I noticed he was given some classes and a few other things there. Yeah, he's uh, Jim is actually one of our um, resident artists in our hands-on Tucumcari Artist Residency Program um, that we kicked off this year. We've got six artists. Um, I was thrilled to see Jim apply for that when he and June moved uh, moved to Tucum Carry. He was out at Fired Up last night. He got some really amazing shots of the uh, fire performers. But uh, yeah, we're we're having a really fun time with this artist residency program. Um, we've like I said, we've got six artists. Um, we've had everything from silversmithing to needle felting to photography. Um, we've got a muralist coming in. Um, a children's illust book illustrator. She does doodling. Uh, we've got a Christmas one coming up. Just it's been fantastic. Uh, really, truly world class um, artists that are coming in and and teaching these classes in our community. It's been so fun. Well, your event fired up now. That's an annual <laughs> event. Same weekend every year. Well, up until this year, yes, it had been. We used to hold it on the last Saturday of the month. Um, this year, we moved it up to the weekend after Labor Day um, to accommodate this big car show. Um, the Rollers Only Car Club, are, we have a local chapter here that's part of an international club, and they wanted to bring a show, and this was, you know, the free weekend for a lot of, uh, you know, people that participate in the bigger shows, and so they really wanted to have a show here, and we wanted to help them make that happen, and so we moved our event to partner with them. And boy, I think it was a pretty good decision. Connie, you know, that's one of the things that's really great about what you do in Tucum Carry. You guys are as flexible as Gumby when it comes <laughs> to adjusting and making things fit and work. Uh, well, there's David again. I was worried we lost David for a few minutes. Uh, David, we were talking about uh, the advantages there in Tucum Carry that you guys are just as flexible as Gumby when it comes to uh, adjusting dates, moving things, and making events and things happen. How, how are you doing there, David, in Tucum Carry? He may still be having a little issue with this. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, Connie, you know, these events that you bring to downtown Tucum Carry, and a lot of Route 66 enthusiasts, we, we, we get it's common. I mean, I do it too, but we get traveling route 66 and we become myopic. We become so narrow minded. We can look down a beer bottle with both eyes <laughs> and we, we miss like in Tucum carry just, a, just a short distance off route 66. You have an, uh, an absolute amazing, uh, historic district. And like a lot of them, it's faded, it's tarnished, but these kind of events are just bringing this thing back to life. We're, we're really starting to see a lot of investment back into our downtown. Um, yeah, I say it's, it's seven or eight blocks from Route 66, um, but we still have some neon down there. Um, the Odeon Theater still has a neon sign. Our Masonic Lodge has a neon sign. Um, lots of great buildings downtown, of course, where my office is inside the uh, Historic Railroad Depot. That's just a beautiful, beautiful um, building that's been restored. So there, yeah, there's a lot of stuff down there. We're, we're seeing a lot of, uh, we had a new um, art gallery slash market store open this last week. Um, we've got a coffee shop downtown now. We've got, you know, we've got a lot of great things going on down there. We have David with us, but he says he's still having a bit of trouble. It's yeah, I something. just saw that. Well, we'll we'll plug his event for him. <laughs> he's he's got a really great thing coming up with a um, he's doing a pet hosting a pet adoption event for our local um, paws and claws animal shelter. 
Um, David's been a real champion of them in the last few years, and he'll be hosting that there at the Roadrunner Lodge, I believe. Yeah, you know, uh, David's always done been good about that. Our last visit last year, we stayed there, and uh, he had ended up with a couple strays, and uh, I uh, he tried to get me to try to send me home with a puppy. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think they they ended up. Uh, I think the Roadrunner has a new um, puppy mascot. I think he's got a new one there. <laughs> you know, uh, you're speaking of uh, uh, neon. You guys uh, earlier this summer took a hell of a beating with a storm because neon's a big part of what the Tucum Carry experience. And uh, Melissa Beasley from the New Mexico Route 66 Association sent me a little bit of an update. <clears throat> that you're, yeah. you're having a fun fundraising project uh for getting your neon back together yeah so we you know that was towards the end of may we had that huge hailstorm um come through and it just obliterated so many of our neon signs here in town um i don't i really don't think any any sign made it out without having some broken pieces and so we uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat's a little scratchy this morning. Um, Tucum Carry Main Street has partnered up with the Route 66 Association of New Mexico um, on this fundraising project. We're matching some funds um, from a NEON project that we had with the funds that were raised through the GoFundMe. And we've got you know a little over $10,000 and we're working on um, getting those broken pieces taken off of the signs now having them remade and then we'll be working on installing them um <laughs> where, if, if somebody wants to donate uh to this fund uh where would they where would they, through to carry main street or they can donate through us it's probably better to donate directly through the route 66 association of of new mexico we've got a gofundme page up and i can share that link with you. It's on our uh, association website and Facebook okay. page. Um, people can check it out there. I will get that posted in uh, when I publish the podcast today. I'll include that link. Thank you. Okay. And we'll, yeah, we'll get that up. Uh, how long have you been doing the fired up events? Uh, there so, in uh, this is our 12th year for hosting this event. Of course, we had a couple years off during um, COVID and it's, it's a little scary bringing an event back after, after not having it for a few years, you never know, um, you know, what, what the response is going to be to that. And how, if it's going to take a while to build it back up, but I tell you, we have, we didn't see any slowdown. I think everybody just loves this event. Um, we actually had a record number of vendors this year. We had 61 vendors, um, show up and one of them, who was with the car show drove over a thousand miles to participate in this car show. I was absolutely blown away. <laughs> you know, people, the apocalypse, it made, uh, it just upended the apple cart, something fierce, yeah. but uh, there's a real hunger for people want to get out. They want to live life. And I think the silver lining in COVID is, uh, exactly that it showed people that you know putting off stuff till we retire and all that sounds good but let's let's enjoy life while we're here <laughs> exactly you know we had that that little i don't know kind of a micro burst of wind last night that ruffled all the vendors and scattered some stuff we actually um lost our main street tent during the wind and uh we were kind of scrambling around it blew over some road barriers and um, I was walking around visiting with the vendors. We were giving them the option to, you know, tear down and leave if they wanted to. And so many of them said, no, we don't want to leave. We want to stay. <laughs> so Great. we said, you know what? We're going to stay. We're going to keep, we're going to just keep going. We're going to have fun. And it was, it was a really good time. Kids were playing and kicking soccer balls around, you know, just having a really good time. That's what it's about. Hey, David, are you back? Uh, uh, still a, a, a little bit. <laughs> you know, I love technology, especially when it works. Yes. It just sounds like you're really far away from your 
speaker. Oh, I wonder if it's, can you hear me better now? No. Not really? Not really. Let me do that one more thing. Well, Miss Connie, you know, one of the things about Tucum Carry is you never want to judge a book by the cover. And I, I, I'm a, I'm always honest with people when they ask me about two carriers in these small towns. When you drive in, especially from the West, your impression's not going to be good. But if you oh, take it's a deep, terrible. <laughs> when you take a deep breath and you drive in the two carry, you start talking to people, business owners like David Brenner at the Roadrunner Lodge or Larry Smith down at uh, uh, Safari, you down at the train depot and your staff, you, you instantly discover that there is a vibrancy, there is a passion, and there is an excitement in Tucum Carry that's absolutely infectious. And it's being manifest in things like this, this event. Yeah, it's, you know, I think our greatest asset in Tucum Carry is the people. We have yes. some of the best people. Um, Jim Livingston and I were visiting uh, just a while ago, and he said he met some people that had just moved here from Oklahoma last night, and he said it was like old friends. And I thought, you know, that that really is the feeling you have when you come when you come to Tucum Carry. Um, everybody, every store owner, everybody's just friendly. Um, you know, one of my favorite parts being in the museum at the railroad depot um, is just meeting people from literally from all over the world. Um, it's not something you usually find in a rural small town like this. Uh, well, I see, I see big things happening for Tucum Carry because of you, people like David Brenner, uh, building these teams. And people are, another thing with COVID, it started before COVID, but I think it really escalated. People want, uh, they're willing to sacrifice certain things for a quality of life. Yeah, and there, with, you have high speed internet. You have a lot of the things there. You're at the junction of some major highways. Uh, I I think you're going to have these visitors that come for these events uh, are are going to ask themselves questions about maybe we should do more than just visit to Carry. Well, I would love to help them relocate here. <laughs> It is a fun town. It's a lot of fun here. There's always something going on. Um, big events, small events, just day-to-day -day life is fun here. You, are you a native there in Tucumcari County? I am. I am. Um, my family has been here for about three or four generations. Well, that's the way my, my wife's family is like that here in Kingman. They're uh, four or five, six generations Kingman. Uh, I'm a relative newcomer. I've only been here since 1966. And uh, her her father's family actually is up from Tombstone, Arizona. Uh, I know I know David's a transplant, but he's really carved out a nice, nice life for himself and uh, made some great contributions there in Tucumcari. Yes, he has those. You know, I, I call them the big three, the Blue Swallow, Roadrunner, and Motel Safari. They... Uh, they just add so much to our community and they're all wonderful supporters of the things that we do downtown and partnering with us on events. You know, David partnered with us on a, a neon uh, paint night. Oh, I think it was last summer. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Emily pretty. She, um, I think she works. Yes. Some She's, okay. You know, Emily, she, uh, she is working on a micro neon. I mean, excuse me, a micro mural, uh, project where she's she's painting um, I think it's 50 micro murals around town um, and then she's going to put together a little postcard that kind of leads you around town to where they're all at um, in uh, the kind of like the Bob Waldmeyer style of, of a map um, and it is so fun we have she painted a little um, mouse on the baseboard in the uh, railroad depot and it startles more people it is so realistic it's so fun <laughs> there's and then i think there's one at uh, the odeon theater that's um eating some popcorn see though it's little touches like that that really transform things that uh just add a distinctive 
you know, it makes the community unique. Yeah, lots of layers to Tucum carry. There's a lot to see and do. D David, are you with us for your uh, to talk about some animal adoption? I am. Can you hear me now? Oh, that is better. Motel, and we're doing that in conjunction with uh, the animal control officers and Tucum Carry, the um, city shelter, as well as Paws and Claws of Clay County um, Rescue Service. So we're looking Very good. All sorts of dogs, cats, puppies, kittens um, invading our pet friendly area, our little yard set up specifically for the pets to play around in. Some of these little dogs that, that come out, they've never had grass underneath their feet. It is wonderful to see them. You know, they, they sometimes are born in a kennel and they don't get they don't get that experience until they come out to uh, a place like ours or if they get adopted out. That's very good, David. You know, you, you've you've done so much there. We were talking, Connie and I were talking. You know, the key to transforming these communities is building a sense of community through partnerships. And and David, you've been such a big part of that in Tucum Carry since I've known you. Uh, you've just been such a big part of that. Ah, yeah, you made you made some big contributions there in Tucum Carry, big ones. So if uh, somebody wants to adopt a pet, I was joking that last year when I stayed there, uh, you you did a, had a good sales pitch, and we almost left with a puppy. Uh, oh, we almost left with Gypsy Lucille Rose. Yes. Ah, I knew she'd get a good home. Yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's, she's something else. She's not like the other dogs in, in my life, but um, she's quite lovable. At about 8 o'clock every night, she goes absolutely bonkers and finds the loudest squeaky toy she can and <laughs> starts chawing on that for about 15 minutes. Yeah, animal control is uh, really important. You know, it, and that's another aspect that gets lost a lot. But uh, animal control is really important. And my thought is that, well, she married him. She should be able to control him. Oh, wrong answer. Sorry about that. Uh, David, should they call, when, when, what date is your event there at the Roadrunner? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. You bet. He's going to be cooking hot dogs and giving those out to people. Hold a dog and then you get a dog. Uh, you know, uh, in my dark sense of humor, I have a lot of things I could say, but I think I'll refrain. Yeah, let's don't put dark into this right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, because this is a good thing. This is really a good thing. That, that, that's That's good. Do you get a lot of interest from surrounding communities when you're doing this, Dave? Um, this is the first time we've really put on um, a lot of effort promoting it outside of Tucum Carry. So I'm going to have to defer an answer on that until later. Yeah. Because I don't think people knew about it outside of Tucum Carry for our previous events. Okay. Well, uh, Connie, what other events do you have coming up? You had fired up. Uh, what other any what other events are coming down the pike here? We've got well we've got a couple of our artist um, residency programs coming up. We've got I mentioned the muralist. Um, her name is Francesca Velasquez. She's a local here to Tucum Carry. She's done a couple of murals here in town. She's going to be offering a couple of um, workshops, um, acrylic and something else, and those will be in October. 
Um, and of course, you know, anyone is welcome to come take those. You can find out more information about the um, hands-on Tucum Carry residency program on our website. Um, it's tucumcarrymainstreet.org. There's a whole page set up for that. Um, I see Nolan uh, Stoltz is on the podcast this morning and had asked um, a, a couple of questions about that. And this year's residency program is already closed. Um, so through the end of this year, but uh, we're hoping this was provided. Uh, we we got received a grant from the New Mexico Resiliency Alliance to kind of run this pilot program this year um, to get it off the ground. And so we're hoping that there's been enough interest in it, and um, you know just the quality of the artists that we've gotten. Most of the classes have sold out. Um, so we're really hoping that we're gonna be able to find some funding to keep this going and and do it again next year but we'll have um two classes with francesca in october and then um a couple of classes in november with laura love um and then on october 28th we have our downtown um halloween block party which is always a lot of fun too we close off two blocks down by the odeon and we have music and food vendors and a tons of businesses and organizations and families come out and set up um, trick-or-treat booths and stuff for the kids and just have a, a safe space for them to come down and and hang out with their friends and trick-or-treat so that'll be on October 28th um, but you know right now we're, we're really focusing on a lot of our effort now on this neon restoration um you know that's such a such a big deal for the tourism in tucumcari um tucumcari main street also hosts the tucumcari talking tour which um is a it's a self-guided um auto radio tour that you can do in tucumcari and there's 16 locations on it and a lot of those locations were um businesses that had signs that were damaged so we really want to help them get that back up and going and so this neon project that we're working on with the association um it's really kind of it's been a lot of fun watching uh, johnny meyer has been down here working um rob at the blue swallow has been helping him you know with the use of their they've got that bucket truck um so he's graciously been volunteering his time um assisting johnny with taking down neon and making uh um uh, templates of the neon and then they're they're taking them and having stuff remade but just uh this coming week paul and i hope i'm not saying his name wrong paul green greenstein um he's a neon aficionado from los angeles he is volunteering his time to come in this week and help johnny with some of the neon work uh so he'll he'll be in tucumcari this week johnny will be back i think uh, Melissa and Mike Lee will be in town. Um, I know Mike and, and Melissa are working with Fast TV Network to actually um, document all of the neon preservation that's going on with this project so that they can film an episode of Legends of Route 66 for it. Oh, very good. Uh, they're, they're getting uh, ready to move their uh... – Fast TV network to Tucumcari, is that correct? That is correct. We're we're excited. They've hit, hit a few little bumps. Um, trying Surprise. to yeah, <laughs> yeah, moving a big corporation like that and securing a big building, uh, getting things lined up. It, and there's there's a lot of hoops to jump through. Uh, there's they are ex excited to be coming here, and we're excited to have them come in here. It'll be a real godsend for the community. It will. It will. Hey, yeah. uh, David, uh, David, you know, uh, aside from pets, you have, uh, well, you you win a lot of uh, TripAdvisor awards for your motel, and it's it's rightly earned. Uh, is your uh, secondary pri motel project still kind of on hold because you're so busy? Uh, or is that... Well, there are various reasons for that, but yeah, it is on hold right now. Yeah. I just thought I'd, I'd ask because I'm I'm really excited about that. Uh, David's uh, in a unique position to offer. So someday soon he'll be offering a guest two unique lodging experiences on uh, Route 66 and Tucumcari. And you know, Tucumcari is another one of those places. It's more. I know that there was the advertising campaign Tucumcari tonight that was really famous for for years. But Tucum Tucumcari is more than just 
a stop on the way to. I really think a person could set up camp at the Roadrunner Lodge and find ways to keep themselves busy for at least three or four or five days, especially if they plan the visit around uh, an event like what you just had yesterday. Yeah, there's, well, we, we uh, have been using the Tucumcari tonight and instead of the T-O, we're saying to T-W-O. So you got to stay at least two nights to, to get all the uh, Tucumcari tonight experiences. Well, you know, just one example, of course, the Mesa Lance Community College Dinosaur Museum. Uh, I know during the summer it, it got suspended like a lot of things with COVID, but I understand they're picking up their uh, uh, dinosaur digs, their fossil digs again uh, this past summer. Yeah, that uh, the the museum there is actually a um, laboratory for the paleontology program at the college. Uh, it's just a fantastic museum. Uh, lots of of spaces for the kids and the adults alike. Um, any, any dinosaur lover would love that museum. You know, it it, it was uh, that is a shocking thing to discover in Tucumcari. You do not expect a a Smithsonian quality. Yeah. it's it's small but you do not expect the Smithsonian quality museum and laboratory in yeah. a small rural town. Yeah. We have lots of surprises here. Now, I know you have the Odin. I was really excited and volunteers such as yourself, David, pour so much into this community. Uh, but I was so excited to see the, the uh, cleanup down at the old princess theater. Yes. Yes. We're excited about this project. Um, so the princess and the Odeon were actually, uh, built and operated by the same man, um, and th we call them the sister theaters. Um, and the poor princess has just sat vacant and empty for, oh gosh, since the 60s, I guess. I know they had a couple of small things in there um, in the 70s or 80s, um, but you know the, the city has put a new roof on the building. Um, We've done some cleanups there. We've staged um, a little display inside the old ticket booth. Um, we're working on getting the two storefront windows on either side of the ticket booth um, cleaned up. And, and um, we're wanting to use them as um, art display space yes, for yes. our residents, uh, our resident artists. And so we're working on that next, but um, it's nice to see a little bit of life coming back to that building. And we've got a great group of people here in town that um, actually sit on a, a task force um, for the restoration of the, of the theater. So expect, you know, it's a, it's a really big project. It's going to be a multi-phase um, restoration process, but um, one that I'm excited to see get kicked off. I'm really excited to hear about using the storefront windows for uh, displays. I saw an interesting project I was just reading about and talking to the people, uh, creating shadow galleries in the historic business district. And the concept is uh, to encourage business owners uh, with a matching funds type grant to at least repair the facades of their buildings, even if they're empty. And yeah. then in the show, in this front store window, they put a backdrop, even if it's just a black curtain yep. and they display work from local artists. And the idea is to create a, uh, well, a photo gallery, encouraging people to walk around through town. All of the artwork is for sale and a percentage of the sale goes to the owner of the property for his facade renovations for other projects. It gives the artist a little bit of money. It encourages foot traffic and encourages property owners to clean the place up. I like that idea. We have yeah, okay. we've done a few um, kind of pop-up events where we've placed art um, from the students at Mesa Lands College into some of the storefront windows. But um, I like that idea of partnering with the property owners um, and helping it be a benefit for them as well. You know, it sounds like, David and Connie, I got to tell you, it sounds like if a fella is a skilled trade, plumbing, roofing, electrical, carpentry, and uh, he wants to get out of uh, the rat race, be it Houston, Texas, or Southern California, or get out of the snow from Duluth or Minneapolis, looks like uh, Tucumcari might be the land of opportunity. 
I think you're right. We could certainly uh, use some of those tradespeople here. Yeah, very good. David, any, anything you want to add to this? Kind of, sort of. Oh, my gosh. Not at all. <laughs> so, yes, those, those trades people are in high demand. We do not have a licensed plumber in Tucumcari right now. We have to import them from other communities. And uh, that just means they're not available for projects. They'll come out for emergencies, but project work gets pretty much put on hold unless you – you know, have a large project and you go out to bid on it and all that. Um, anyway, yeah, trades people are in high demand in Tucumcari, as they probably are many places. Uh, you've already spoken about many of the benefits of, of the Tucumcari area. Um, out of the rat race, you're not dealing with traffic like you would be in any of the larger cities. And when I say larger cities, I mean anything over 5,000 people. <laughs> Well, you know me, I have trouble any place with more than three stoplights, so Tucum carries a little big for me, but I like it there. Well, we only have two. Or no, we have three now. We just got, we just got a third one backed up. We have four. We got one downtown, too. We're, we're a big city. Eight. We just, we just um, spaced ourselves out of Jim's criteria. <laughs> oh, well, well, take that. I take it back. We've only got three. Hey, David, thank you so much today. I'm sorry we frustrated you today. For those, if you couldn't hear David, he was talking about that they don't have a licensed plumber in Tucumcari. And if you're listening to this and like say, uh, tradespeople, you know, uh, first of all, I am not paid by the Chamber of Commerce. I just like to tell people where to go. And uh, I'm telling you that Tucumcari might be a place to check out for you if you're a plumber, a carpenter, or electrician, or just kind of looking for a nice place, to, a new place to call home. I think they'd welcome you pretty much there. Connie, what are you, uh, any last thoughts uh, besides that you'd like to get something besides more <laughs> coffee? <laughs> no, I, Jim, thank you so much for having me on this morning. I, I apologize. I know I'm not uh, on top of my game very much this morning. Um, we, we, it was a con- long day, but it, gosh, it was fun. We uh, yeah. These events are just so much fun. Um, from what I from what I saw from your postings, it was a long day that lasted at least two or three weeks. That's about right, yeah. <laughs> With about a year's work of uh, planning behind it, but um, it's it was a great show. We had a great turnout um, from the community and the the neighboring communities and. Um, I got to follow up this week with our, uh, store owners and some of our vendors and stuff and see, but it, it really sounds like everybody had a great day yesterday. I know we had a street corn guy down here and he sold out twice. He went to the store and bought more and then he sold out again. So, um, God, that's, and you had people from as far as El Paso and Denver and we did, God. we did. We had one guy that drove over a thousand miles, uh, just, Oof. Yeah, wow. <laughs> it's a, it was fun. And we, you know, it just keeps growing and getting better every year. And so we anticipate, you know, even better things next year. Oh, good. Guys, both, you know, Connie and David, thank you so much for taking time from your schedule. Uh, and I know you're tired, but I thank you for doing this because the whole idea behind this program is, well, uh, telling people where to go and sharing America's story. And we got both of them this morning. You guys are writing a new chapter in America's story. Wow. And um, you're, I like telling people where to go. And Tucum Carry is one of my, my, one of my places to go. Um, Thank you for your, the opportunity. Yeah. yeah. It, it, anytime, just give me a little bit of notice and we'll put this together and get, get a shout out and going. Uh, it's still Mayberry Television, but we're we're, we're attracting <laughs> an audience, and uh, it's not a gym show. It's about the people who make things happen, and and let's say America's story. Uh, a little bee in your bonnet for Fired Up. Not only do we have the Route 66 Centennial coming up, but uh, you know, 2026 is the 250th anniversary of the United States of America. I. Should have known that, but I didn't put that. I, well, <laughs> you, you know, if you, 
And just think if we put those two events together. Yeah. For well, an event if, with something like Fired Up, what would happen? It's also the um, 100th anniversary of the railroad depot being built. Um, so oh. we're going to have a lot to <laughs> celebrate in 2026. A, non a non-stop block party. That's right. That's right. Stay we're going to do everything we can. <laughs> you know, Connie, the good thing about there's a silver lining in all of these things. And the things, the project that this David's taken on motel restoration operation trying to give to the community and you trying to build these events you know people don't realize all the work that goes into these things but one of the silver linings is you never need an excuse to drink <laughs> i should have drank more water yesterday i can tell you that much <laughs> guys i want to thank both of you so much uh Ma i just told maggie that opportunity was calling she said she has uh, she's a plumbing apprentice Oh, and I'm not the chicken fairy, Maggie. There you go. Yeah, see, opportunity is calling. Uh, next week, uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Tom Cotter. He was famous. He did a series of books about barn finds. And wow. uh, he, he's going to join us next week. He's uh, been on most of the big programs, David Letterman, Jay Leno. But he's got a new book and on his latest adventure, he's done things like drive a Model A Ford down the Lincoln Highway from end to end. And but he just had a, a road trip from Key West, Florida, into the Yukon. And, wow! Uh, this, this should be kind of a road trip inspiring uh, that, discussion. That and is quite we'll, a road trip. And then I'm I'm hoping to finalize in the next week or so. Uh, we'll have the mayor and tourism director from Needles, California. Uh, I, I give them a hard time. Needles, California. We, we, when I was a kid, we'd call it needless California. It, uh, it gets a tad bit warm, even for this dry roasted nut come summer, but those folks are really starting to turn that community around. They're doing some pretty amazing things down that way. And then I'll be on the road a lot in October and we'll see if we can do some programs from the road. Oh, that sounds fun. That sounds great. Your your uh, needless California reminded me of uh, growing up. People used to, myself included, when I was in high school, we said Tucum Scary um, instead of Tucum Carry. And so we took that and we turned that into our name for our Halloween block party. We decided we're going to have fun with it. <laughs> you know, that's excellent because... Not only does that fit the theme of the event, but for all former, for Tucum Carry residents, people who grew up there, and people who have moved to Amarillo or Socorro, they see this, and it's a, a it's a link to their past. That's yeah. something that will draw people home. Excellent idea. Yeah, and it's fun, right? <laughs> we yes. got to have fun with it. Yeah. You mentioned the Odin Theater, and I'll let you go with this. Now that opened in what nineteen thirty six. 36 that's correct yeah very good well guys thank you uh we'll do this again next week uh let's see what we can come up with and uh and like i say i'll be on the road if you've uh, still got a couple open dates if you want to schedule presentations uh my my destination is the uh, miles of possibility conference in bloomington illinois i'll be speaking there on october 19th about the uh, evolution, the dawning of the Great American Road Trip. And it promises to be a, quite an event. They've got uh, Evan Stern will be one of the keynote spook speakers from uh, Vanishing Postcards podcast, an excellent program. Uh, Marian Pavel will be there from uh, Bratislava, Slovakia. He is the developer of the uh, Ridge 66 Navigation app. Uh, that should be interesting. Dr. Lindsey Baker is going to be talking about his project, his book, about documenting eating on Route 66 restaurants. And Dr. Baker is quite interesting. He His primary mode of transportation is a 1929 Ford Woody station wagon. Uh, that right there tells you that birds of a feather flock together, and that eccentricity is one reason I like Dr. Baker. Hey, guys, we'll send this out with a little bit of music from uh, Joe and Woody and the boys of the road crew. See if we can inspire a road trip or two, maybe to two from Carrie's night. And, uh, you know, if you need help putting together a great road trip in the United States or Canada, check out the good folks at RootTripUSA.com. Those folks are like me. They test the pillows. They taste the enchiladas. 
and uh, before they before they send you out on the road. And they've got some great tourism development consultants to help you put together a worry-free, trouble-free uh, odyssey. Uh, some of the consultants I know very well. One of them I see every morning when I shave. Jim. Guys, thank you. Connie, David, thank you so very much for your time this morning. Take care, my friends. Adios, mi amigos.